And so we're now going to move on to what data privacy and sovereignty mean for disaster recovery presented by Mike Preston, technical marketing architect at Rubrik. Awesome. Thanks so much. And thanks to the panel. That was uh, that was a very insightful discussion. I learned lots there. Um, so, yeah, uh, my name is uh, Mike Preston and uh, I work at uh, a company called Rubrik. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about uh, exposure risk. Um, and, you know, before I sort of get into, you know, how Rubrik helps with exposure risk and things like that, I do kind of want to level set what exactly what exactly Rubrik is, because I'm sure there's there might be some people on board that, that don't know really who we are or what we do. So first up, you can see sort of the first bullet in the bottom left here. You know, we're a modern data protection platform, right? So so we offer a, a software as a service product to go in and essentially back up and recover your environment, whether it be cloud native in you know, the big players like Azure and AWS and Google, whether it be inside your data center with things like hypervisors or physical servers, you know, NAS, stuff like that, or your SaaS data uh, like M365 and, and whatnot, because we all know we have data all over the place. Uh, so we're, we're here to sort of cover them all. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you might be wondering now, like, why why would a backup company be talking to us about sort of exposure risk? It's it's not really up your alley, um, you know. And, and what we quickly realized is, you know, we're we're your data protection solution. We're basically that one product within your data center, within your cloud, that sort of has that global catalog of all of your data. Right, we're we're touching all the pieces. We understand where your data is, how much of it is there, things like that. So that's really what led us into building some of the value add that we have. Now that data protection solution, I should mention. You know, the panel mentioned there's there's table stakes, right? There's things like encryption. We we support you know at rest and in flight encryption. We're an immutable file system, so once data lands, you know, within our platform, it's immutable. It can never be changed. So ransomware is not going to come and and encrypt your backups and uh, you know, kind of leave you up the river that way. Um, and then there's a, a number of other things like retention locks, so you cannot uh, you know, decrease the retention of a backups. There's something called two-person rules, which requires two people in order to actually change the retention of your backups and legal hold. And there's a whole bunch of security table stakes within the actual data protection solution. Uh, but on top of that, and this is where some of the exciting stuff gets, because you know backups not it's not necessarily exciting. Um, what we do offer is something called anomaly detection or encryption detection. So we're able to take those backups that we have and crack them open and look inside them and look for signs of things like malware or like ransomware, and not only just detect anomalies, like not only say, oh, so you know you've had so many files change or things like that. We also run it through, you know, machine learning algorithms to to take a look and look for signs of encryption and different things like that. So we go that one step further to really nail down, you know, what's happened. Uh, from there, there's our sensitive data discovery service, and that's really where I'm going to hone in on today and sort of explain how that works and how we've built that and some of the the new and cool. You may have seen the safe harbor statement flash up real quick. Uh, so there is some unreleased stuff that I'm going to talk about today. So some super exciting things around sensitive data. And then, you know, of course, on through when we come to recover, you know, only we want to make sure we don't just simply reinfect our environment. So we have the ability to perform uh, things like threat hunts or look for indicators of compromise within those backups, isolate that, quarantine it so we don't just simply restore it and reinfect our environment. So, so that's kind of the rubric story. And that's where we are. So hopefully that kind of level sets, you know, what what River can do uh, and how we can help. And now let's sort of dive into the actual sensitive data portion. So this really is no surprise to anyone, right? Companies and, and as organizations grow, so does the amount of data that you have. Uh, and we heard the panel talk about that constantly, right? You got data moving around in the cloud. Uh, you got data moving from cloud to cloud. We've got data moving from data center to cloud. We've, we've essentially got data everywhere, it, on premises, in the cloud, in SaaS, uh, and it's constantly moving around and data protection solutions don't help with that, right? We move that data around as well. So really, you know, to get a handle on this, you really need to understand where that data is because as that data grows, so does your exposure risk, 
right? So now all of a sudden, you know, we've got things like clouds and regions and region level replication, and we've got data going all over the place. We really, really need to understand where that data is. That's that's sort of step number one in, in calculating what we call your exposure risk, right? So in terms of sensitive data, we need to know, well, what type of sensitive data do we have? How much of it do we have? And of course, where where is it? Because we can't protect it. We can't lower this exposure risk if we have no idea, you know, uh, about the answers to these questions. And uh, I did want to hit on. I made a note there too because I know Odia did explain a little bit about it. It is up to you, right? These cloud providers provide you a service, but through their shared responsibility models, you know. Your data is your data. You're in charge of that data. So they'll offer some services to help you and help point you with things just like Rubrik does here. Um, but the idea is you're responsible for your data. So you really, really need to understand it. You don't want to end up you know, being a news story, if that makes sense. So what does Rubrik do? We get a little bit of an overlay here. That's no problem. Um, essentially, we take you know all of those backups that you have. And I do want to you know, kind of Hit on that. This is all happening on your backup copy of data. So we're not touching your production networks. We're not impacting your production performance in any way. These scans all happen on all of the, the uh, backups or the snapshots as they come in. So what happens is it's sort of like a policy-driven approach. We define these analyzers that essentially go out and they scan our backups for certain things. So we have a number of of pre-built analyzers built around, you know, PCI and personal information, HIPAA, things like that. There's over 50 pre-built analyzers to scan for, you know, everything from credit card data to, you know, IP addresses or things like that. So you, you could set that all up within the SaaS platform to, you know, detect whatever it is you're, you're looking for. And then Rubrik simply just, you know, points out a number of things to you. Number one, it helps you identify where that sensitive data is. Uh, again, happens in the backup. So you can kind of take that and correlate that to your production network. So if you end up finding, you know, credit card data on some web server that you're running up in AWS and it's not supposed to be there, obviously take that proactive step to go and secure that data or, you know, remove that data from that, that workload if that's the case. Uh, it really helps you to manage any compliance requirements that you have and really just, you know, maximize your business agility because, you know, to do sort of this type of, of um, operation manually on all these different production networks, your network's up in the cloud, your network's on SaaS, it takes a lot of work, right? It's, it's going to be a lot of monotonous work, and there's a lot of room for error there. So, so this happens automatically in the background on your backup data uh, and, and allows you to sort of, uh, sort of see that exposure risk that you have. So... You know, with all of our services that we have today, this is kind of where we sit on sort of the cyber attack process. So if we look at sort of what happens when when an attack occurs, a lot of times this is a super common scenario, right? Credentials get compromised, something gets deployed into your environment. Uh, it, you know, the attackers sit there, they wait, they watch, they see the network traffic, they analyze things and they, you know, deepen their access. And then, you know, when it's time, they elevate their permissions, they expand their footprint, they go ahead, exfiltrate all your data, encrypt everything. So, you know, we'll, we'll say day five here, but, you know, this could be day 30. They can sit in there in a long time. But essentially, you know, it's once that's encrypted, that's when Rubrik helps you. So, what we've done is we've, we've tried to put together a solution to say, well, how can we move our product up in, in this sort of uh, this timeline, right? Because it's great that we can help you recover. We can help point out, you know, the blast radius of attacks. We could, the data is, but what can we do to move this up uh, to be more proactive, to help mitigate, um, you know, the actual attacks before they occur. And to do that, we really started thinking about the role that, that users play uh, within your environment. Because any IT admin, I was an IT admin for 20 years, and we all know users are the weakest link, right? Our, our end users are the ones, they're our weakest links. That's that's usually why it involves a, a compromised credentials and things like that. So in terms of our users, you know, they're the ones that we're providing all this data for, right? Like we wouldn't have all this data if we didn't have users that needed to leverage all this data. So they're 
they're sitting in, you know, our directory services groups or whatever, and they're accessing all of this data all over the place and they have the need to access sensitive data. And the problem is, you know, um, as they access this sensitive data or as they grow with our organization, all of a sudden, you know, they get moved around to different groups and things happen. We got a lot of automation running in the back end, things like that. And next thing you know, you know, maybe a blue user is in the green group here and all of a sudden they have access to a slew of new uh, types of data. And, you know, a lot of times, well, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but sometimes that's not our desired result. So what we've done is kind of taken this exposure risk and tried to add one more point to this. So what we're building is, is now we want to point out to you what type of sensitive data you have, how much of it is, there is, where that's located, but we also want to point you to who has access to it. Because uh, once you sort of have this complete story, we can then begin to um, sort of move up that exposure timeline. So, so what we're calling this is user access. And essentially what it provides is, you know, more visibility into your sensitive data. So again, not only pointing out where your sensitive data is, how it's classified, but also pointing out who has access to that. And then beyond that, we're providing sort of risk assessment in a variety of different lenses, because it's not enough to just, just to say things like, oh, you know, workload one is at risk because it contains a bunch of sensitive data. Uh, we also provide risk assessment based on the users themselves. So you're able to quickly jump in and, and see who your top risk users are within your organization. And then you can take that information and proactively use that to go and secure your environment to help mitigate uh, you know, the, the impact of an attack should it, I shouldn't even say should when it occurs. Uh, I keep hearing that more and more. A lot of people are not saying, you know, if an attack occurs, it's more along the lines of when something's going to happen nowadays. And then beyond that, we also provide modification tracking, uh, within the solution. So being able to understand when a user's risk level has changed. So maybe you had an attack on July 12th. Uh, you can go back and you can see, oh, you know, maybe this uh, John Doe account uh, has moved from a low user risk to a high user risk, meaning he has access to sensitive files containing highly sensitive data. You could sort of correlate that information and understand it and then maybe think, oh, maybe something's going on with this John Doe account in general and sort of aid your, your SecOp teams and your IT teams in sort of that root cause analysis. So in the end, the approach is much the same. We're still identifying the sensitive data. We're going ahead, we're running those scans automatic within the back end. Uh, we're just adding the ability now to sort of integrate Active Directory and provide sort of that access control visibility uh, within the back end. And again, all on the backup files here. We're not, we're not touching production. Um, and uh, Basically, you know, this is all happening automatic from the Rubrik SaaS platform. And I do want to hint on um, or say one more thing. Uh, this solution itself, you know, we're talking about data sovereignty and things like that, does not require the data to be, you know, uploaded to the Rubrik platform. So this solution, the way Rubrik sort of architected is if you're backing up on premises, you have what's called a rubric cluster on premises, which sits inside your data center, handles all the compute, all of this scanning, all posts all the backups, things like that. It's simply our SaaS sort of platform that's acting as that centralized control plane to you know send the commands down to scan your data and things like that. If it's in the cloud, all of that processing happens within your cloud account. You know, the data never leaves the confines of, of your accounts, basically. So you know, in the end, we've kind of moved ourselves up in this timeline now, uh, and we're we're really excited to release this within the next you know few months to to sort of help customers sort of mitigate attacks should they occur, uh, and to help customers just proactively take steps to further secure uh, their data to to further you know make sure that their ACLs are tight and that their access uh, to their sensitive data is you know desired, essentially. So, you know, to kind of wrap it up again, uh, this is what 
this was really based on just the sensitive data discovery portion, but we do offer, you know, a sort of that whole risk timeline as, as it comes to backup and anomaly detection, pointing out where your sensitive data is all the way through into recovery. Uh, so that's, you know, rubric in a nutshell, and that's, you know, what we're sort of developing for, uh, you know, our sensitive data discovery service. Um, and that's essentially what I have for you today.